ladies and gentlemen, boys and... Hey girl, how you doing? Uh, welcome to episode... Fuck of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Don't know what it is, don't care, alright? Welcome, yes, I know, haven't done an episode for a week. I missed last week's, my apologies, but I think you'll be totally on board with the reason why I've been working really hard on the comedy special. We had a whole bunch of shit just happen in the week and I had to cancel everything. I canceled my fucking driver's lesson. I didn't get to do that. I canceled the fucking podcast. I only barely got a video up. But it's been absolutely absolutely hectic, but the the comedy special is really coming together now. So I've I've seen the first draft. Woohoo! I've seen the first draft of the comedy special and let me fucking tell you it looks amazing. It looks fucking gorgeous. I was so worried about... Because here's the thing. I knew my material was up to standard with other comedians that I've seen, you know, on, on Netflix, on TV. I knew I was up there. I was good enough to get there. Like, I wouldn't be the fucking best. I wouldn't be Dave Chappelle or Bill Burr. But I reckon I'd, I'd, I'd get there, you know? No, no one would see the jokes and be like, that guy sucks. But I was worried that the, the technical video and audio of the special wouldn't be up to television grade standard, but fuck me, it looks beautiful. That shit looks like a movie, man. It's so fucking cool. I cannot wait to show you guys uh, the comedy special. We are getting very, very close to release. Every step, clo every, every step closer towards the finished product is... is uh, you know what I'm saying? It looks fucking awesome. The performance was brilliant. There was a cup. There's a couple of things that I wasn't happy with that need to be changed. So we we're gonna do a couple of drafts back and forth, and I still need to sit with Antonio, and edit with him and pick. There were a few camera angles that I didn't like that I because you know I know how I want my jokes to be seen. But the main thing is the first draft has finally been seen, and fuck, it looks good. It looks amazing. The second draft is actually sitting in my emails. I haven't seen that yet, but I sent him all these notes and he said he's fixed it, so I'm fucking pumped to see the second draft. Um, reason why I was so busy, man, is uh, we started radio back up again and I completely fucking forgot about it. <laughs> I had my whole week planned. I'm like, driver's license booked. I had the podcast recording scheduled in. I had uh, also, we, were, we had a giant shoot day that was going to take all day to film the intro for the comedy special because uh, I got a little skit and I wanted to film it and make it look really cool. So I had a whole film crew lined up and booked and, and, and a shoot location set up too because uh, I'm like, well, if I made more than my special budget, I might as well fucking blow it on unnecessary shit to make it look cooler, right? I had all this shit booked and then Luke's like, hey, man, so you ready for radio on Wednesday? And I was like, ah... Uh... Yeah, man. And I just cancelled everything. I'm like, cancel the driver's lesson. Cancel the fucking podcast. I just cancelled all this shit. I had to fucking... and but I, but I forgot to cancel the shoot day for the comedy, the comedy special intro. I forgot to cancel the shoot day. And then it got to Thursday. We just finished the radio show 9pm. I'm like, he goes, alright, man. I'll see you tomorrow for tomorrow's radio show at 3pm. And I was like, fuck. I can't do it. <laughs> That's the most unprofessional shit. Just not turning up to live radio. I was like, fuck, man, I can't do it. So, uh, I think uh, uh, Friday's show was was Luke and Radio Mike without me. Um, I managed to surprise them at the end, though. I, I, I recommend go and listen to the Luke and Lewis podcast. If you haven't heard our radio show, go and listen to like the latest episode. There'll be a Friday's episode. Uh, it's very, very funny because it's just a completely unprepared thing where I just didn't show up. They had about four hours notice to replace me. They couldn't find anyone to replace me. So Luke just did the show with Radio Mike, who's our button pusher. And uh, But I ended up finishing the shoot earlier than I thought. So I just ran from where I was shooting it to the radio station and I surprised them on air. The, the tech guys at the radio station taught me how to remotely control the 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 studio computer so i just started playing sound effects while they were talking and they had no idea who was doing it i know it was just really funny it was it was just like some some good radio that i thought we made so go check that out um but yeah sorry about missing last week's episode 
it just got so fucking hectic and so busy with the comedy special but i can promise you that it's all going to be worth it we're getting very very close now uh and i'm very excited to show you guys what i've been working on for the past three years man um anyway what else have i been up to that's enough that's enough fucking talking about my my uh good things that are going on that's not what you come here for is it you come here to listen to me complain about trivial shit and you know what I got you, okay? I fucking got you, because you know what I hate, guys? Every time I miss a podcast episode, I'm backed up with, a with like, I got too many rants. You should see my podcast notes. I'm not going to even get through half of this shit, all right? Because I haven't been here for two weeks. See, this is the thing. I had Andrew Hansen. He was a guest, so I wanted him to talk. I didn't get to rant. Then I missed an episode, and now we're here. There's three weeks of fucking rants that I need to get through, and you know what I hate, ladies and gentlemen? I hate anyone who wants to do anything. Anyone who wants to do anything with me, fuck off. Hey, Lewis, do you want to go to... Nah. Hey, man, I was thinking you and me should meet up so we can talk. No! No, I don't want to do that. Hey, man, could you give me some advice on... No! Google it! Hey, man, I was thinking that you... And my girlfriend and you and your girlfriend, fuck off! I don't want to do it! I don't want to go anywhere with anyone. Leave me alone, alright? And I'm not talking about my friends. I'm talking about estranged cunts. You know, estranged people. I haven't spoken to you in years. I don't want to hang out with you. There's a reason why you're not my mate, alright? I don't want to meet with you. I don't want to talk about your video ideas. I don't want to talk about your fucking brand idea or your clothes. I don't want to do anything with you. Leave me the fuck alone. I've just... Dude, man. You know what I've started to do? With my life? And I recommend this to everyone, alright? I've just started saying no. 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 Don't want to do that. I've just started cutting out all the shit that I don't want to do. Because I'm way too fucking busy to spend time not doing things that I want to do, but sparing some other cunt's feelings. Because I don't want them to get offended because I don't want to hang out with them. It's like, sorry, not my fault. I don't want to hang out with you. I've got other shit to do, all right? Man, there was this one fucking thing. This one... Dude, this one person... But you know, you know, you know those cunts that are just, that are just relentless. You know those people, they don't, they don't get it. Like they'll message you, and then you'll be like, "Hey, hey, you should come here and do this with me," and then you go, "Nah, I'm busy then," and then they hit you up again later, and they go, "What about this time?" And you go, "Nah, I'm busy," and that's fair enough. All right, if they try twice and you're busy twice, fair enough. But then, but then if they go for number three, and you say, nah, man, I'm busy, that is the universal language for, I don't want to hang out with you. I've said I'm busy three times. I know I'm lying. You know I'm lying. Don't make me say no, because you're going to get fucking offended. You're going to hurt your own feelings by forcing me to say flat out, no, don't want to see you. Just let me say I'm busy and believe that shit and never message me again. That's all I want, right? If some cunt hits you up three times and you say you're busy every single time and the person saying they're busy doesn't try and set up the meeting again, that means give up, cunt. (laughs) But man, some people are fucking relentless, dude. I had this one person who just kept hitting me up. Come and do this. Come and see me. Come and do this. I'm like, no. Busy, busy, busy. And then five times. I'm like, fine. I'm sick of saying no. I'm busy. I'll go. And dude, it it was like an epiphany, man. It changed my life. 
It changed my fucking life meeting up with someone I didn't want to meet up with. Just sitting there across from the table, listening to them talk at my face. I couldn't focus on what they were saying because I just had this epiphany, man. My whole life was changing inside my head and they had no idea. They were saying, yeah, so I was thinking of doing this and what's your advice on that? And then maybe if, if I get it going well enough, you can help me with this. And I'm just sitting there listening, not even listening, but just watching them talk at me. And I had this life-changing realization. I don't fuck with you, cunt. I don't want to do anything I don't want to do anymore. I am never going to do a thing I don't want to do anymore. And ever since that moment, I'm so grateful to, for that cunt for hitting me up five times in a row until I finally caved and met up with him because I know I will never do that shit again. I've had, since that person, I've had like three people be like, hey, do you want to go here and do this? Hey, do you want to hang out and talk about this? Hey man, we should have a meeting. Can I give you a phone call? I really need some advice. I just say, nah. Sorry man, can't help you. <laughs> It's the best shit ever. No. Dude, it's like I've unlocked a superpower. If you're listening to this shit and someone asks you to do something that you don't want to do, you look that person in the face and you go, nah, man. And say nothing and just wait for them to respond because everyone, right? No one ever says no. Do you know what I mean? No one ever... Everyone's trying to spare the other person's feelings. So no one ever just looks at another human being in the face and says, Nah, I don't want to do that. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever said that shit? Like, you'll, like I'm not talking about a friend. Like if you're friends with someone and they go, Hey, do you want to see a movie? You go, No, I don't want to do that. And then you say, Do you want to go play golf? I'm talking about an estranged cunt. You know those strange people that they want to meet up with you for God knows what and and you and they're trying to make it seem like it's just a social get together but you know and they know they want something. And I'm sick of those people. I I'm I'm sick of me trying to spare those people's feelings. It's like they want something, so I'm going to say no now. When's the last time you did that, huh? Because, like, imagine this, right? Some estranged cunt comes up to you and they go, Hey, Sam, uh, do you want to go to the spaghetti restaurant at 7 p.m. near your house? And that's another red flag. Because if the cunt hits you up, and they want to meet near your house to make it easier for you. That's not because they're nice. That's because they're making it harder to say no. Because if they go, hey, do you want to meet in the city? And you go, oh, I'm 40 minutes out of the city. I won't be able to make it after work. Sorry. Good excuse. But if they go, hey, man, do you want to meet 20 paces outside your front door for 30 seconds? How do you say no to that? Without just saying, no, I don't want to do that. You can, there's no excuse for that shit. So the next time someone's like this, imagine this shit. Hey, Sam, do you want to meet at the spaghetti restaurant three yards from your front door? Just imagine looking in that person. This is what I started doing. And I just go, nah, man. Not really. <laughs> and they don't know what to do. They got no idea. It's checkmate. Because they want you to say yes, but they know you don't want to do it. So they're prepared, man. If you go, nah, sorry, man, I'm, I won't be able to make it that time. They go, that's all right. What about tomorrow? And then, then you're on the back foot. If you just go, nah, man, not really. What are they going to say? Why? Why not? And you don't make it about them. You just say, I'm really busy at the moment and I don't really feel like doing that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking own. That's what I've started doing. Just saying no. Hey, Lewis, do you want to go to... Nah, man. 
Oh, how come? Oh, I just don't feel like it. Another time? Nah, not really. I'm pretty busy. But good luck. <laughs> and it's the best shit ever. I'm a changed man. I'm not doing nothing for no one. I'm not showing up to your free event. I'm not give, I'm not answering the phone. I don't do anything. You should see my Facebook Messenger. 30 unread messages. I don't give a fuck. I don't talk to anyone anymore. It's the best. All I give a fuck about is what I'm doing, my girl, and you cunts. That's it. I don't do shit that I don't want to do anymore. The only time I do something that I know I'm going to hate is if I think I'm going to get a bit out of it. I'm like, this is going to suck, but hey, maybe it'll make a good joke one day. That's it. And that's what I want to impart onto you guys. The next time someone's like, hey, do you want to do something? And you don't know who they are, just say no. Unless it's one of my shows. If a, if someone who beat the fuck out of you three years ago is like, hey, do you want to catch a Lewis Spears show? You go, yeah, sure. I'll bring my fucking whole family. And you all buy tickets. <laughs> Man, something that I did do, uh, well, yesterday, last night, uh, last night, Saturday night, I went to the Halsey concert. Halsey? Halsey? Is that how you say it? That fucking, um, short pop star chick? Halsey? Halsey? I don't know. My girl's a fan of her, so I bought her tickets to Halsey, <laughs> uh, uh, or ages ago for, like, uh, our anniversary or Christmas or her birthday. I can't, that's how long ago I bought them. I can't even remember what fucking thing it was. I hope she doesn't listen to that. Because she'll be like, it was for Christmas! I'm like, alright, whatever. I think it was for Christmas. Anyway, so I got a ticket to this fucking concert. Because I know she really likes Halsey, Halsey, whatever her name is. And, uh, man, it was funny. You, you know what I've noticed? Female singers... Their shows are better. If they're in an arena, they're just better than men. For sure. Because they can be so over the top and dramatic and have so many more lights and costume changes and set design and dances and all this theatrics. And the reason why they can do that and male artists can't is because nobody watching it is going to see... Is going to see them come out in like a sequin, skin tight outfit, dancing with a backup dancer, splashing in water that's been brought onto the stage while there's lights behind them and a light show. No one's going to see that and go, Oh, that's fucking gay, man. <laughs> that's the only reason why women can do that shit because no one in the audience is like, Oh, look at him putting effort into his performance. What a fag. No one does that shit to a woman. So now every time a man has an arena show, he just has to rock up with a microphone and a fucking chair and pretend he's not having the time of his life. Like, I swear, I think Kanye West is the only male artist on the planet that actually had a really theatrical live show. And even then, he had to have a mental breakdown in the middle of every show on every tour because if he didn't do that, people would be like, Oi! Oi, nice mask! You got some glittery diamonds on it? What are you, a fucking poofter, Kanye West? Kanye West! More like... Gay! <laughs> that's what I've really noticed, is that's why arena shows so i think that smaller like theater stuff men do it better but when it reaches arena level women just shit on men all the time like beyonce at coachella dancing around with 30 whores behind her 15 different con con uh, 15 different costume changes her hair and her makeup's done she's yelling and telling everyone to dance if fucking any if jay-z came out and did that Everyone will be like, hey, Jay-Z, more like Gay-Z. Oh, he wears more than one outfit to a show I paid $100 to attend. Oh, look at him putting effort into it. What a poofter. 
they're, they're, men can't do that shit. Michael Jackson, maybe. But that guy fucked kids, so, you know, that's pretty gay. <laughs> Fuck. But man, that's what I that's what I noticed. Yeah, I think women do the the giant theatrical concert thing better uh, than men. Excuse me. Um. But men. But I think she she did it a little bit too much because you can. There's there's a limit with how over the top. You can be in Australia before people just start taking the piss. And it's not like theatrically you can be over the top, but the moment you start saying some over the top shit, Australia just has this ridiculous bullshit meter that the moment you start saying shit that sounds like you th you think you're more special than you are, Australians are like, yeah, fuck off. Stop that bullshit talk where, and I think this was, this was Halsey's first show in Australia. So she hadn't encountered the Australian bullshit detector yet. So she gets on stage, she sings, she dances. She was fucking amazing. Actually, she can really, really fucking sing. Like she was really singing live. There were parts where she turned the music off and it was just her voice. And she it was incredible, man. And she can dance too. It was actually a really good show. But there were parts where, she, where it was just her talking. And it was just... Shut up. Like, I could feel the audience go, Shut up. Fuck off. I could feel that. The bullshit detector. She was reaching the limit. Like, she got on stage, she was like, Melbourne! That was one thing I did appreciate. I think Austra American artists have finally figured out how to say Melbourne, and it's not Melbourne. Every time an artist comes on stage and goes, What up, Melbourne? I'm like, dude, you couldn't ask one person. Hey, how do I say this? One person. You couldn't ask one person. Every time I go to a state or a city, I make sure I know how to say the city, and I know the types of areas. So if I ever need to make a joke about a, a ratty bogan person or or a rich person, I know what area I'm talking about. So I'm like, in, in Melbourne, you know, if you're rich, it's Turak. If uh, <clears throat> if you're in Sydney and you want to talk about ratty people, it's, uh, it's fucking Campbelltown. You know what I mean? Like, I know that shit. So I make sure I know that. But every time an American artist comes on and goes, what up, Melbourne? You know that they just didn't even ask one person. But she came on, she's like, well, what up, Melbourne? I'm like, oh, yeah, she said it properly. I appreciate this. And she's talking, but she's not just talking, right? She does that that fake, deep, important speech where there's just really long pauses in between everything that you're saying to make it sound like everything you're saying is so important, but it's just not. And she's like pacing back and forth. She'd stand up on the stage and she'd be like, Melbourne, I'm here tonight to tell you that I am having a great night. And everyone would be like, Woo But then she just starts saying some nonsensical shit and, and everyone's bullshit meter just went off the charts because she said shit that didn't make sense in that pausey manner this is one thing I, I i got i got my phone out she said it and i just started fucking laughing at her and it was really silent i was like the only dude it was like eight thousand people in the stadium and she says this one thing and i just start going ah, <laughs> what a waker and everyone around me is like no she's a god my girlfriend's giving me a death stare. I pull out my phone and I write down what she's saying. She's like, can't you just enjoy one thing without taking the piss out of it? I'm like, no, I'm an asshole. This is who you chose. And I bought these tickets, so I'm going to take the piss out of it, all right? So this Halsey chick, she's on stage and she's like, Australia, Melbourne, I'm here to tell you 
that you are amazing. And then everyone's like, yeah, woo! You are fierce. Woohoo! Yeah, we're fierce! And then she goes, but also, you're a fucking baby. <laughs> and I just started to piss myself. And everyone, the whole audience is like, Hang on, you called me fierce, and everyone goes, Whoa, we're fierce! And then she goes, You are a fucking baby! And everyone goes, Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, what? A baby? And then she starts going, That's right, you are a baby, and you need love, you need attention. And you need someone to tell you that everything's going to be alright. Because you are a baby. <laughs> and then uh, no one's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a baby. Like there was, it was 8,000 people. And everyone, at most, it was like a, yeah, I mean, whatever, man. Play another song. I'm a baby. Cool. Like, it was just so fucking confusing. You are a baby. <laughs> and then uh, after that, she goes, but also, you are a warrior. You are fierce. And, and at this point, she's just losing people. And I think she realized, you are fierce. You are starting to realize that I am talking shit. Time for another song. <laughs> and then everyone goes nuts again. And she just didn't talk for the rest of the concert. It's fucking weird, man. Oh, man. So, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what I did yesterday. <clears throat> um... What else did I want to talk about today? Oh, yeah, I wanted to... Man, I got fucking busted. I went to uh, Luke Kidgel's show in Melbourne. I went like three times. Because I love seeing shows get better and better and evolve. Because Melbourne was the first place he did the show. And I just wanted to see it get better and how he changed and all that shit. Plus, I'm just a good fucking mate. And uh, But one night, man, I got fucked, dude. So one night, it was packed pretty much every night. I think he sold out almost every show, right? So I'm there, one of the particularly packed nights. It was like oversold. So he does the show, it was great. And then he finishes it. And because uh, I didn't want to get swamped, because everyone there knew me and it was his show. So I just wanted to get in and get out. You know, people can get photos with him. You can get photos with me at my show. I don't want to take away from his thing, right? So <clears throat> I, I run to the bathroom, really needed to wait. So after the show finishes, I run to the bathroom and I'm like, I'm going to go to the bathroom and then I'm going to run out so people don't fucking start getting photos with me instead of him. Or like, because sometimes people are like, hey, can I get a photo with both of you? And I'm like, ah, it's not my fucking show, man. I, I, don't, I shouldn't be in a photo with... So, you know, it's just weird, man. So I go to the bathroom and there's two... It's one of those bathrooms in the fucking venue where there's a man, there's a man's bathroom and then there's a female bathroom, but it's just like a toilet, like a sitting down toilet and there's one toilet and there's no difference between the two. The only difference is in the women's one, there's a fucking tampon bin, right? That's the only difference. So it was basically just, they split two cubicles up. There's no reason for them to be gendered. They should just both be unisex to make the line shorter, right? So I go in and both of them are being used. I really need to wait. I really need to get out before the audience starts blocking up the door and then I can't get out, right? And then there this woman comes out of the women's bathroom and she looks at me and there's no one behind me. And she goes, and then she's like, she, she says to me, she goes, oh, I don't think there's any difference between the men and the women. You should just use this one. And I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. I'm just going to use the women's one because there's no difference between them. Nobody's waiting. It doesn't make me an asshole, right? So I go in. I'm like, thanks. A girl told me to use them. So I go in. I'm like, thanks. I do a wee. I didn't shit. 
I put the seat back down, flushed it, made sure there was no evidence of me being in there, like a good, polite person, like like a man should when he's using the women's bathroom. <laughs> and then I, I, you know, I finish up, I open the door, and then bam, massive fucking line of like 13 women waiting to go into the women's bathroom, and the men's bathroom is now open and empty. And all of these women know who I am. And straight away, this girl's like, Oh, Lewis. Oh, hey, did you... Did, have you been in the women's? <laughs> and I'm like, ah. Ah, uh, yeah. And then the whole line is like, I, Lewis is... That's why we're waiting, because Lewis is in the fucking women's. And I had to walk past this massive line of women who all knew who I was. Like, man, I used to like that comedian until I found out he fucking hangs out in the women's bathroom. The women, the woman who would have, been, would have been first in line probably checked the room for fucking cameras. Oh, man, it was so embarrassing. I felt like such a piece of shit. Oh, man. Worst shit ever. Hang on, I got this fucking email that might determine what I'm about to talk about. One second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, I just got an email about um, the Australian Podcast Awards. I entered Spearhead Sundays into the Podcast Awards, and I knew that I wasn't going to get nominated because I stand, I say cunt too much. I wasn't going to get nominated for Best Comedy Podcast or Best Newcomer because that's not how shit works when you say cunt. But I knew that I probably could win the popular vote. But the thing was, my my link to show you guys to vote wasn't working. So I was like, hey, I sent them an email and I'm like, hey, the link, because you pay money to enter this thing, right? This podcast awards. And I knew I could win the popular vote category. So I, <laughs> I entered this podcast in and then uh, my link wasn't working. I'm like, oh, you can't vote for me. So I sent them an email. I'm like, hey, just letting you know, my voting link isn't working. How am I supposed to send my listeners to 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 vote for me. That's why I haven't talked about it on this podcast. That's why you're hearing about it just now. I just got an email back then. And it, let me read what it said. It says, uh, I can see that you entered your podcast into the comedy category and uh, you were put into the popular vote free of charge. There was a popular vote gallery. Um, however, uh, that gallery with all of the podcasts that were entered in the popular category were only available until the 4th of April and then we picked four people from that that had the, the most votes. So what I've done ladies and gentlemen is I've <laughs> entered my podcast into an awards thing that's based off the amount of votes that you get and I forgot to tell you cunts to vote for it within the time limit. So I assumed that I just got zero votes because I forgot to tell you guys about it within the time limit. And now you can't vote for my podcast. So fuck, what a waste of money and time I put into entering my podcast in the popular category. Fuck, I'm such an idiot, man. You know what? Oh, that was really annoying, man. I wanted to fucking win that thing or at least try to. Now, now I know that I don't even have a chance because I left it too late and I forgot about it. I think I entered in it forgot about it, we missed the voting period, and now you cunts can't vote at all. Fuck! Well, now what am I going to do? Man, that's annoying. <laughs> well, I'm such an idiot. You know what? Here's my new pledge. I am officially starting up the campaign to win the podcast awards in the popular vote category in 2019. Put it in your calendars. Get out your phone now. Put it in your calendars. March 30. Remind Lewis about the podcast awards. March 30, 2019. Remind me about that shit so that I can tell you to vote for it and give you the link. I should be entered by that time for next year's. I'm starting the campaign Today, I'm going to have the year-long build-up to win the Australian Podcast Popular Vote Awards in 2019. I've said it, we're here, we're getting it done.
fuck, man. I feel like such an idiot. But that's the new that's the new goal of this podcast. We've got 365 days to win next year's podcast awards. This year's podcast awards. I'm too much of an idiot to tell you guys when to vote for it. But now we've got a year's notice. March 30, put it in your Google calendar. Tell Lewis to tell me to vote. And then we're going to take that shit out next year, all right? That's the goal. Fucking idiot. Oh, man. All right, well... See? Guys, back to normal. I'm, I, I, I miss a week and... Look what happens. You know what? Maybe last week... No, it wasn't working last week. So I missed the voting period by like a fucking month. And I send them an email like it's their fault. Dickhead. Oh, man. All right. With that being said, now that we're not going to win the popular vote category of the 2018 awards, the campaign begins for 2019. (laughs) Fucking moron. All right. Let's get on the miscellaneous bit at the end. If you don't know, miss bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. Turn off now. Stop listening. It's responsible for a a wave of suicides across the nation every time this part of the podcast is read out. It's the part where I answer life advice from listeners. If you have a question or a funny story you think I would like, or you need some help with something and you think I can make it funny, send an email to podcast at loosespears.com. That's podcast at loosespears.com. And, uh, you know... Summarize it in the subject line, send me your email, and if I think I can make it funny or if I think it'll be interesting, I will answer it. All right, let's get on to the first one. Great subject line. Clickbaited the shit out of me. All caps. Exclamation points everywhere. Help. I fucked my best friend and now he's being weird. Love it. Perfect. Great. I fucked my best friend, now he's being weird. This is going to be great. G'day, cunt. I love your shit. Can't wait for the special. Thank you very much. For this one, you can call me Sarah. See, a lot of you cunts have started calling me uncreative because I call everyone Sarah that wants to be anonymous. And that was true because at the start, I just kept calling everyone Sarah. But now, everyone who emails the podcast just tells me to call them Sarah. So most of the time, it's their choice now. So that's what it is. It's fucking Sarah, all right? This one, you can call me Sarah. All right, I will, you uncreative bitch. So, recently I just got out of a three-year-long relationship and it was on, and I was on the prowl for a dicking. Good on ya. This bitch knows what she wants. In my sheer desperation at the time, I saw the opportunity when one of my best male friends came over to have dinner and watch Netflix. Don't fuck your friends, all right? I already know where this is going. One of you is going to f- fall in love. Um, As you can imagine, Netflix ended up turning into a couple rounds of sex, which was preceded by him staying the night at my house. All right, so you got you you fucking ordered some express dick, watched some Netflix, and then he stayed at your house. See, I like that. Good on you, Sarah. She knows what she likes. She knows what she needs. She's like, you know what? I need a fucking dicking, but you you messed up because you shouldn't do it with your friend. Because that's just going to ruin any friendship. Either someone's going to fall in love or it's just going to be irreparably weird because you won't be able to go back to that point in time before you fucked. It's hard to hang out with someone when you know what their pussy smells like. You know what I mean? Like you'd be like, hey man, do you want to come over and do you want to go to the city and go bowling? And he's going to be like, why would I go bowling when I could put my tongue on your asshole? That sounds way more fun. You know, it kind of just ruins the friendship. The dynamic is what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. All Out of all of my friends, I got no idea what their pussies smell like. And I think there's a good correlation between the bond of friendship and knowing what their pussy smells like. I think that kind of ruins it. The next day, I told him that we... I told him what we were doing would be best to remain casual. And I clarified that he was free to sleep with other people. Hey, that's pretty good, Sarah. I like, you know what? You sound like a cool girl. That's exactly what you want. A girl who's like, hey, I would like you to fuck me. And that's all. That's great. Because those chicks are so rare, man. They don't exist. It's like, 
It's like you'd be like, hey, I would like to fuck you and, and that's it. And then she goes, yeah, sounds like a great idea. And then three inches into the first penetration, she's like, hey, we should get married. <laughs> so you sound like a cool chick, Sarah. All right, the next day, I told him what we were doing would be best to remain casual, and I clarified he was free to sleep with other other people. However, he said that he prefers to sleep with one girl at a time. Oh, he's in love with you. He doesn't prefer to sleep with one girl at a time. He prefers to have a girlfriend. Any person who's like, oh, I prefer to stick to one person at a time. You're in a relationship now. Oh no, you're not. They are. So Sarah's like, I'm single. I can fuck who I want. But the guy you fucked is like, oh, Sarah's my girlfriend now. I just don't call her that. I'm. I, it's just, she's going to be the only person that I sleep with. And we're also friends. So we're going to see each other all the time. That's what a fucking relationship is. In this dude's mind, you're his girlfriend. <clears throat> It has now been a week, and he has come over again since. But last night, I got a message from him asking whether I was looking to sleep with other people. I, uh, it's fucked. I replied by asking what he meant by the question. See, you're doing this thing perfectly, Sarah. You're doing this right. He's fucking it up. I mean, you're, you, you started off bad by initiating the Friends with Benefits with a friend of yours. But you seem to be keeping the boundaries pretty clear where he's like, hey, are you going to sleep with other people? And then you're like, um, my answer's going to hurt your feelings. So what do you mean by that? <laughs> you basically just said, do you really want to know the answer to that question? Because it's going to make you cry. <laughs> I replied by asking what he meant by the question. And he said that he just didn't want me to feel pressured into not sleeping with other people like he was. This was somewhat fine. No, that wasn't what he was trying to say. He was fucking testing the waters to see... Because here's the thing. If you said, yeah, I'm planning on sleeping with other people, he would have been like, all right, fine. But then his feelings were hurt. What he wanted you to say was, no, I just want to fuck you. And then he followed that up with, well, seeing as we're both exclusively having sex with each other, why don't we just date? This dude's fucking up your dick appointments, man. Um, this was somewhat fine, but then later in the conversation, he came back to the point of asking as to whether I was only sleeping with him. Yeah, so he's in love with you. I'm not too sure if I'm reading into this too much, but I am wondering if he seems to be catching feelings. Yes. Other than this, he has been sending heart eye and kissy emojis and complimenting me all time, which is not what he used to do. Yeah, okay, see? This guy's fallen in love. Th that's that's the thing. The heart eye and kissy emojis, that's it. Done. He's in love with you. He wants to get married. The only emojis this guy should be sending you is the eggplant emoji and the squirt emoji. That's it. Maybe the finger one. Yeah, maybe the finger one. But the moment he starts sending you the heart eyes, unless it's in response to a photo of your tits, he's in love with you. He wants to get married. After just getting out of a long-term relationship, I am only looking for a route, but I am worried that he's looking for more. He's been a really long-term friend of mine, and it would suck if this were to get in the way of that. Should I keep sleeping with this guy, and can we ever be just friends after casually fucking? What do I do? Thanks heaps, Lou. Sorry for the long email. Have a shit one. Uh, yeah, you fucked up. You've, uh, you've ruined your friendship. Um... You cannot be friends with someone that you're having sex with. It is not something that anyone is capable of doing. Because that's... See, a lot of people are like, Oh, why can't you be friends with someone who you're having sex with? And the simple answer to that is because that's not what friends are. Friends don't fuck. Friends hang out and talk to each other. If you're having sex with each other... You're now not friends anymore. You're at the very least fuck buddies. And that's an entirely different thing. You don't hang out with your fuck buddy, do you? No, you have sex. And the moment you start mixing sex with friendship, that's what a relationship is. 
So you can't just start fucking your friend, someone who you really care about and who they care about you, without that turning into at least one of you catching feelings. You can't do it. It's impossible. Well, it's not impossible, but 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not going to work out. There's a reason why you never meet people like that. It's because those people generally don't fucking exist. Uh, yeah, you fucked up your friendship, Sarah. I'm sorry to say. Um, I mean, I don't know what you can do. It sounds like you've been very, very clear. It sounds like the, the only... You're doing the fuck buddy thing perfectly, which is you've made your boundaries clear and you've made your reasons for being there very, very clear. But you, you, that doesn't matter because you you didn't start this... You didn't start the relationship as fuck buddies. You started as really good friends. And when you add sex into that, it's essentially a relationship, especially because... He's like, oh, I only want to have sex with you. So the moment you touch someone else, he's going to get deeply hurt. Because he's very clearly falling for you. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I would, I would suggest finding someone else. I mean, if you're, if you're a girl and you sound like a young girl as well, you can get anyone, jump on Tinder, or just join any kind of social club, you can find someone else that's not insane. And, and, and really, you know what? If you're not looking for a relationship, so they can be kind of a little bit crazy <laughs> as long as you don't see them more than for more than a month. So I would just... I mean, if you want to maintain the friendship, I guess my best advice to you is you need to stop fucking and then maybe stop seeing each other for a little bit, just try and reset the friendship, like turn it off and turn it on again. But like I said, it's very hard to sit down and play patty cake with someone when you know what their pussy smells like. So, I don't know, I don't know Sarah, it sounds like you, you might have just ruined this friendship Uh, because you let him know what your pussy smells like. I'm sorry, I don't have too much advice for you other than you, if if you want to maintain the friendship, you can't have sex with the dude because obviously he's catching feelings. The only thing you can try and do is make very, very clear. You could go to him with what you've said to me and say, hey, I think you are catching feelings for me. I want you to know that I'm not interested in a relationship at all. And like I said at the start, I only want some dick. But you seem to be, you want more from that. Do you want more from what we are doing? And if he says yes, you just have to say, I'm really sorry, but I can't give that to you. And if that's what you want, then I think we should stop having sex. And maybe we should have a break from seeing each other for a while, just so we can reset and just be friends again. What do you think? And, um, yeah, then you go find another dick and then, after a couple weeks, maybe start trying to hang out with him again as platonic friends, but it's very hard to go. I don't know. It just, I don't know. I, I'm very skeptical of you being able to salvage this, but you can give it a go. But it sounds like you've just fucked up. I don't think you can be friends with someone that you're having sex with, but give it a go if you want. My advice is to stop fucking him and find someone else have a break, and then maybe try again. But I don't know if that'll work. All right? That's the end of the podcast, guys. Thanks for listening. I'm not going to miss any more for a while. Um, so, yeah, thanks for listening, guys. If you want to support me on Patreon, check it out. Patreon.com slash Lou Spears. You get early access to all my videos. Oh, and thank you for all the great feedback on the latest Lou review. It's going really well. It's got like 120,000 on Facebook and like 40,000 on YouTube. It's going really, really well for me. So I'm glad you guys like it. I'm going to try and do more Lou reviews like that. I think why that one works so well is because it was just punchier and less wordy. So I think what I'm going to do is more Lou reviews like that that have like me talking, me saying jokes, and then those little mini sketches. Like me putting my hand in the oven, me whispering at the kid to shut the fuck up. Um, what else was in there? There was like 
just edit montage of the PTSD sequence. All those kinds of little mini sketches inside of Lure Review, I'm going to try and do more of because they're easy to do and it just makes the whole video much punchier. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. I'm going to put out more videos coming soon. Uh, I got a sketch with all the boys uh, film that will probably drop next week. So I got more shit on the way. If you want to see that before anyone else, Patreon is the way to do it and it helps me afford everything that I'm doing right now. So thanks for listening, guys. Rate me on iTunes. I will see you next week. If you want to see me live, loosebeers.com slash giglist. Have a fucking shit one.